intern, good morning. Good morning and welcome back to the Beaver Lodge Conservation Park. And it's just looking so beautiful. Look at this. Can you believe that with our own two hands, uh-oh, and the catfish is beached on land? How did you get on land, buddy? How did you get on land, eh? Let's get you back where you belong, back in that water. Oh, and look at this water, intern. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that with our own two hands, we have helped to bring this much prosperity to the park. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Do you see it? Do you see it? I see. I see the snapping turtle. Look at that guy. Oh, he's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. In fact, here, let's take a moment. I know we're in turn. It's kind of, kind of boring, but let's just take a moment. Put these pictures where they belong because it makes our bosses very, very happy when we've got some amazing photographs to share. Believe it or not, many zoos and parks are getting uh, those wildlife cameras set up inside the park, and that really gets the public engaged. And I think that's a great idea, in turn, because the more you can engage the public in caring about the park animals, the more likely they are to take care of the park and care about the park. Though I have been told that we need to take a little bit better care of said public, in turn. I have been... Uh, been informed that we need to make sure that they've got all of the benches and the lights and everything they need. Oh, but look at that handsome turtle. Oh, absolutely wonderful. And believe it or not, these snapping turtles are actually one of the most popular animals here in the park. I don't know why, since the public never sees these guys, but they just seem to think that the snapping turtles are absolutely amazing. Hey, 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 I want to keep my toes. I want to keep my toes, good sir. I want to keep my toes. So we actually need to make sure that this snapper, oh, let's see, it doesn't have everything it needs. It's unhappy snapping turtle. Well, let's try giving it, ooh, let's give it a little island bog to lay on. Oh, I think that would be kind of nice, except I don't know if it would really match her. Let's do this. We'll give it a little, a little bed of freshwater foliage that it can roost in right over there. Roost, well, you know, it can it can climb over here and then hopefully find some rest over here. And it looked like it's a little bit bored, so let's throw in some common roach. Let's throw some of those guys into the water for it to chase. Plus, it always helps to have a little bit of diversity to the fish that we have in here. Look at this handsome catfish. Oh my gosh. Intern, I could just spend forever hanging out in the wetlands park that we have created because it is so beautiful. Just look at it. We've got little sunken... Oh, look at the little catfish. They're swimming side by side. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And we don't even have to worry that much about freshwater leeches in our underwear. Always a good thing. Always a good thing. Ah, but hopefully... Oh, there's that snapper again. Let's keep an eye on it. Here's the beaver branches. Our beavers are doing wonderfully. I'm very happy to report. We also need to check on our GPS system to keep... Whoops, okay. Now you gotta be careful around the snapper intern. They often do not come up on land. They stay so fully submerged in water that algae can start growing on their shells. And they're actually only native to the United States. Did you know that intern? What you doing? What you doing, Mr. Snapper? Hmm? Hmm? You just hanging out up here? I hope it's okay. They really do nor- Oh man. Yeah, guests love the zoo, but we're still struggling to keep our high ratings, so we'll have to see what we can do about that. No, okay. Oh, it's getting a little nap. It's sleeping in the shade in turn, so let's just leave it be. And let's check the periphery of the lake bed, actually, to see what's going on. Maybe we'll add a few more, few more pieces of foliage. Though a lot of the foliage that we add to this part of the lake gets washed away at the regular flooding when it comes through. You can kind of see the flood line up along the, the little crest of the bank here. Hmm. Okay, everybody's doing okay in there. Oh. oh, an intern. We've also been told that it is okay to add in some salt looks to see if we can attract some deer soon. So everything seems to be going so well in the park. The beavers are breeding and we're getting closer and closer to having enough wildlife and flora and fauna here in the park that we may be allowed to introduce, oh that's just a rock. I thought it was a cute little duckling, but no, it's just a rock. So sad. We may be allowed to introduce the gray wolf back into the area and that would be just stunning. Oh man, and we'll have to take care of that. Do you see that? Unhappy, not entertained guest. Well, well, we'll tend to that. We'll tend to that in just a little bit. All right, the mallards are growing up, which means more baby ducks. <gasps> Look, it's one of the turkeys. One of the gobble gobbles. Hello, handsome. Looks like a handsome metal specimen. Strutting around. Oh, what's this? What's this? 
We've got some lovey-dovey mallards going on over here. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to have more mallards? I bet. Oh, and speaking of lovey-dovey, look at our beavers frolic and play. <gasps> the eastern wild turkey, too, is going to lay an egg. Oh, my goodness. What are you doing in the water, eastern wild turkey, too? I wasn't aware that you were semi-aquatic species. Huh. Well, I don't recommend laying your egg there. You'd be quite bird brain. <gasps> Vixie's pregnant! Vixie's pregnant! Oh my goodness! Look at this! Look at this intern! And I was able to get permission to transfer this handsome boy. We were told if we release some of Vixie's pups back into the wild when they're fully grown, uh, most likely any males that she has, oh, and there's their little pile of ducklings, then we will be allowed to put both Todd, who was named Todd by popular demand, and Vixie together inside of the sanctuary. So time to pick up our, our beautiful foxes here. They want us to hopefully, even though Vixie is a little bit more used to humans, they're hoping for more wild behaviors if we keep these two together. So we're going to put Todd over here. And then let's transfer Vixie over here. I know it's a little disorienting. Okay, that's a beaver. Don't transfer the beaver in. It's a little bit disorienting for them when we move them to a new area. But this will be great because Vixie is expecting fox pups. Oh, that's so exciting. There you go. There you go, loves. And they've got their bones. Let's make sure they settle in okay, though. Oh, look at this. Todd's just settling right in. Is Vixie going to join him? Oh, and the eastern wild turkey is now pregnant. No way. Oh, look at him. What a handsome, what a handsome fox. Is there room for you too, Vixie? Is there room for you to rest? You're expecting pups now? Let's see. Yes, look, they're going in to rest together. <gasps> this is so wonderful, intern. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. They're in their little, oh, they're in their little home together. That is just wonderful. Now these are the kinds of pictures we can put on the zoo's Twitter and hopefully have lots and lots of people support the zoo as a result. So actually that should hopefully start attracting guests and visitors over to this. Ah, look at the, the swarm begins, the swarm begins. So let's go ahead and we're going to get ready for all of these people pouring through. Put in some little arches. We're going to have to move stuff around a little bit actually. Alright, let's do this. Come here. Welcome, everyone! Welcome! You're going to come over and witness our absolutely beautiful foxes and their family. A little fox family being built. And this will be a great way where we can educate the zoo guests about the, the social structures of foxes and how they form their little family groups. Very important to keep people constantly on the toes, being educated. Alright, let's see. Let's get some, um, let's get some bilberries over here. Yes, there we go. Good, we'll put this, some bilberries over on this side. Sprinkle this area with them. I'm actually tempted to put some sort of small exhibit right here, to be honest, in turn. I just don't know what, because bullfrogs are already over here too. Now that's a pretty small exhibit. Oops, that filter is really dirty. Why hasn't no one cleaned this filter, honestly? There we go. Oh, why are you upset, ma'am? Going to sit table, not entertain. Well, we've got an entertainer out here. Uh, I guess we can sprinkle more forest fountains about. Maybe that'll help. You go, guys. Have some fountains. Beautiful fountains. Uh, maybe we'll put a bigger fountain in. Maybe that'll help. Alright, put in a couple lamp posts over here. Lori has just grown up. Yay! One of our beavers has just grown up. She is a female, so we'll have to see if she attracts another male to the area. Let's put another educator podium over here, because like I said, this will be a great way to educate people about the social structure of foxes and how they they have their their meat so we're gonna have fox educator uh lena there we go still not pretty happy okay and we need to get some binoculars over here so people can see what's going on with our lovely foxes Woohoo! yay people of the zoo so happy all right we'll put in a couple of pairs of binoculars here couple pairs of binoculars over here and then people are gonna go I want to donate to to the wonderful Todd and Vixie family so let's see let's get let's get some benches in here and then maybe a gift cart has anyone ever used this gift cart a few people are starting to use this gift cart 
They didn't want to actually buy the items when we had them super cheap, so we'll just leave it leave it at that. Um, we'll put the gift cart right here. And then I wonder... Maybe we'll put a playground here, intern. Yes, I like that idea. I like that idea a lot, actually. I think a good playground would be very good to put right here. So, hmm, let's take a moment and we'll dig through our catalog and see what options we have. Did we already add a playground? I don't think we already added a playground. Let's see what options we can add in. Oh, I forgot that we put that many binoculars over here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, we really wanted to get to see. But I think a little playground right here really might help things out because people are having a hard time being entertained. So let's see what we have in terms of options for playground equipment. All right, so let's see what we've got. So we can give these kids a great experience here at the Beaver Lodge Park. I hope that they're, they're more focused on the beavers, but you know, sometimes we just gotta do what we've gotta do to make the guests happy. There we go, all right. So I'm thinking, since we have nothing particularly beaver themed, hmm, bounce houses are always so popular and so are the climbing bars. I think we're gonna go for the simple, simple things this time in turn. We'll put a, a climbing bar set and a slide. Let's see. We're gonna keep it really simple. Just a climbing bar set, a slide, or a trampoline. Ooh, there's, oh, that's such an awesome slide. Wouldn't fit though, wouldn't fit. Kangaroo bouncy ride. The closest thing we have is like a reindeer to being anything forest related. So let's just keep it a very simple, neat, practical, practical little, little playground. Um, hmm. Like this? Hmm, yes. All right, and then let's go ahead and we will add. All right, let's see. Do, 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 do. Sandy gravel path. Um, just normal forest path, I think. For the kids to walk over here. Play in this little playground area. Next to the frogs. So they can be like little toads. Little toad kids. There we go. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead. Go ahead and put that there. Now we've got this little playground area. Let's block this area off with more bilberries. No walking under bilberries, children. And actually a cool log. There, to make people feel like this is even more closed off. Like, nope, you gotta come up this way. Hopefully the playground will help because people, you know, sometimes kids just need somewhere to run, get all that energy off. So I'm hoping that this will help. All right, nice little playground. Let's make sure it's nice and accessible. We don't want the children falling down and getting hurt. We're not that, that kind of that kind of uh, association. We want the kids to have a safe time while they're here. Let's see, maybe put some nice, beautiful medium rocks on this side. There we go, look at those lovely rocks, wonderful. And then where's our shovel to smooth everything out? There we go, flatten terrain. An even smaller shovel in turn. <laughs> We usually have major problems with this, so we want to try to keep it nice and simple. There we go. Okay, good. Nice and simple. All right, there we go. And maybe we can even sneak in a little fountain for the kidlets. In fact, let's see if there's a different type of fountain. Something to jazz it up a little bit. Hmm. No, no, no. We're in the wrong spot. Wrong catalog intern. I know there's so many different companies. It's amazing the kind of juggling that you have to do with companies and business orders. You think it's all about learning about animals, but no. No, there's quite a bit more to it. Hmm, small fountain? We might still want to just go with this small fountain then. There we go. Yeah, keep it nice and simple. Maybe one forest bench over here for tired parents to be able to take a second to sit down. Yes, no, nah. Doesn't seem to fit very well. There we go. So let's see if that helps out our wonderful guests too. So that they feel like they've got a little area to kind of stretch their legs, to rest. Let's see, let's get some more forest benches. Lots and lots of people seem very, oh, Carol the second is gonna give birth. Oh my goodness, even more, even more coming. And let's see how the foxes are settling in actually. Oh, look at the beautiful ferns. <gasps> happy fox, happy fox. Oh, it's Fixie. She seems pretty darn content. Oh, look, I think she's calling to Todd. Oh, there we go. <laughs> One of our rangers is right on that. I think the foxes are actually, oh, it's okay, Fixie, it's okay. Carol, the second has just given birth. How's Todd doing? He's checking out the den. 
I think they're both just a little bit alarmed by the new the new home, but I think they're gonna be okay. Pixie, where'd you go? Oh, there she is. Hey, sweetie, it's okay. I know, she really is used to being raised by humans, but hopefully being able to keep Todd nearby with her will help her raise their, their pups a little bit more wild. You're okay, Vixie. All right, let's go check on Carol's babies. Oh my gosh, we're getting so close. Oh, look at the beavers. Look at the beavers adding to their little lodge. I love it when they add to their lodge. That is just so much fun. <gasps> Vixie just gave birth. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, fox pups. Fox pups. <gasps> oh my gosh, fox pups. Oh, look at them. Look at them play. Oh, intern, look at this. They are just running around. Vixie, you look like you've just passed out already. Todd's checking him out. Here's a fox pup baby. Oh, it's so small. Look at them, intern. Oh, Vixie, are you okay? She's just rolling around in the dust. Oh my gosh. Oh, little fox pups. Oh, so exciting. Vixie, you look like you're dead. <laughs> She's like, oh, so much, so much to care for. So it looks like they have had two fox pups. What is Todd's reaction to this, if any? He's sitting. I think he's sitting and contemplating the fact that he now... He's playing chase. He's play, playing chase with Vixie. Okay. I think that they're making a happy, frolicking little family. So a happy, frolicking fox family. Not bad, not bad. That makes me pretty content. But all right, intern. Huh. Good. Well, the foxes seem quite content, so let's go check on... Oh, look at them. Look at them play. They're jumping around. Oh, what's wrong with the catfish? Mm, it seems like it's okay. I don't know why our park ranger seems to think that it needs to take... Like, he needs to check out the catfish, but catfish seems like it's doing alright. Mallards are growing up. Now let us check on the lovely Carol. As Carol has also given birth to more of the stars of our show, the new beavers. It's her first baby, so Carol the second has given birth to a baby, the 20th beaver in the park, and it's also a little girl. So we're going to name it Carol the third, because we want to make sure we continue these lines. There we go. So there's Carol the third hanging out in the lodge. Can we get a good sight of it in the, in the lodge at all? <gasps> Look, you can see the little beavers. It's walking backwards. Now it's, it's like, I can figure this out. I've got this. Look at them. Look at them. Hanging out in their little lodge. Oh, that's so cool. That's just so awesome. Oh, intern. Well, things look like they're going great, except over here. What's going on? Ooh, and some wild turkeys just hatched. Ooh, are the males fighting for territory? Otis is going to go pee. Shane is playing chase with Mitchie the second. They might have just had a little bit of a territorial dispute. So we'll have to see how the males decide to settle that. And then finally, let's go check on the new baby turkeys. Oh, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, it's so cute. That's so cute. You're just a little fluff bucket. Look at its little legs and its little beak. Oh, so cute. Oh, well, good. Good. Man, talk about prosperity. The foxes are doing great. And you know what we need to do now, in turn, just really quickly... Before we turn in for the day, let us go ahead and put out those salt licks so we can see if we can attract any of the deer because we need some larger prey items if we're going to be able to support the gray wolf. And as soon as we have had 25 beavers in the park, which will be the birth of five more beavers, then we should be able to get the wolf in here. But to get the wolf, that means we need to have some deer. And deer have a bit of a thing for salt. So we're going to go ahead and add this salt into different parts of, there we go, like over here of the park. Kind of where we have our rock formations and things like that, I think. There. And hopefully we'll be able to attract some more wildlife. There we go. Put one right over here. There we go. Hopefully we'll be able to attract some deer to our sanctuary coming up soon. I think we've got pretty much everything else deer could possibly want. 
Uh, yep, we've got plenty of branches, lots of different heights and types of foliage and berries and things like that for them to graze on. And we've got some, some shaded areas for them to rest under, if desired. Some artificial shaded areas if needed, just to encourage them. But I think that should do it. I think that should attract the deer to our park, so we'll just have to see what happens in turn. Alright, I'm gonna keep an eye on these, uh... Oh, look at all those little ducks waddling by! Oh, so wonderful! Look at the way that this wetlands area is just prospering. I cannot wait to see how many more mallards and how many more beavers and how many more catfish and everything we end up with. Absolutely wonderful. Who knows what we're going to find next time? Oh, it's a little beaver. Who knows what we're going to find? It's like every time we turn around, there's something new showing up here. Ah, so I'll see you bright and early in the morning, intern. Bye-bye.